Welcome to part 2 of the Higher Self series of teaching. So in part 1 we covered the different houses as you can see on the screen here. Number 1 to number 12 and what do they stand for? So in this one we'll begin to jump into the Higher Self aspects or how one house or aspects of a house will feed into the another house as results what is accomplished in one house and how it feeds into the other houses very important to remember here as we go through this uh, higher self aspects of the house is to remember the opposite aspects because the opposite aspects feed into different houses as we shall see so the first one becomes that the self and the other self you as an individual and everybody who is around you but seventh house is to do more with spouse it has more to do with romantic relationships it has more to do with intimate relationships and what you see as a reflection of yourself in the next one who is staying with you who has close connections with you it may be even a business partnership by the way seventh house also stands for business partnerships so this is how it feeds itself now briefly what is this first one about the first one is about the self looking at itself the first from the first house is itself this arrow that shows here the self always feeds unto itself throughout life whatever we are speaking in terms of this house graduation is a throughout life process folks it's not a one time thing it's a continuous ever evolving situation <clears throat> so you have the first house which feeds into itself meaning you are constantly re-evaluating yourself and that makes you grow as a human being if this evaluation is not very prominent in people people don't grow through life this is why you can see many people age but they have not really matured Aging does not guarantee maturity, folks. This is just one has to do the work oneself. This is what it shows, this arrow. Then we come to the other one. Some have spouses, some don't have spouses. Some stay single, some get divorced. You have all kinds of situations. So what does that lead to? Whatever the seventh house is teaching you as your relationship to your significant other will feed back its energy to yourself. And that requires self-reflection again, what just happened or who is this thing called my spouse or my husband or my wife or my lover. The self has to again evaluate because this house is feeding back into the first house. So whatever your significant other and yourself both lead to the transformation of self and because this is the Kendra house remember the part when we talked about the importance of the Kendra houses or the foundations of your life so whatever is going on in this four blocks the shaded ones is going to predominantly affect your life it's going to shake the foundations of your life these are your foundational energies this is how people change because of relationships romantic relationships or business partnerships suppose your business partnership is not going very well suppose the partner is very deceptive or a cheating kind of person or wants to take away all your money and run away someplace so that experience is feeding from the seventh house to the first house it will change your outlook of life whatever goes on in your seventh house with your spouse with your marriage with your relationships will affect you because this is the energy it is feeding you that's why it is so crucial to focus on your relationship because it is affecting the two main kendra houses okay this self is not feeding onto the others the other is feeding into you this is how the external world or the external closest self is going to affect your outlook your perceptions your beliefs your experiences and what you think is true or not true through life so you got to examine the planets and points and if you don't know where they are you can contact me on my facebook below so this is one aspect of it which we are checking okay in a chart 
Remember this, this is very important to understand it the way it is. So first from the first house is the self. Seventh place from the seventh house is the first house. So this Bhavad Bhavam or this concept of higher self of houses is based on numerology pretty much. So here we see the numerology of one first from the first place is the self. Self examination is required a lot in life. This is the path to maturity. This is the path to achieving or going towards the higher self. We want to go towards the higher self. The whole exercise here is to unravel how we can go beyond our karmic path, beyond our propensities and desires and to get to that place which we call the higher self. To integrate it more with our life, not to pop out and go into the heaven somewhere, but to integrate it and bring it in our daily life. Okay, that's the objective here, if you want to know that. So now we come to second house and eighth house, the higher self of second house and the higher self of eighth house, which are opposite to each other. Now, if you recall the part one, we spoke of what does the second house stands for? Let's review your family, the family you were born in or the family you create later on if you get married and have kids and everything else, your family stability of life and the wealth you earn your own earning by your work in the world work job business whatever it is the eighth house is the opposite of that that is others family when i say others family it pertains to what is gained from the marriage which is in the seventh house remember we spoke about the seventh house of a marriage how it affects self because it all comes down to self we are talking about the higher self so the gain of the seventh house is in the eighth house that means it's your in-laws seventh house is the stability what stability it provides because it's the foundation of life it's one of the kendra houses eighth house is the instability of life the ups and downs of situations your luck when it runs out or when it becomes a gain this fluctuates through time right different phases of life and it represents others wealth as in whatever your inheritance is suppose you're inheriting a lot of wealth from as a result of having very rich in-laws that might be inherited wealth or inherited wealth from others it's others wealth as much as house number two is your wealth house number eight is other people's wealth whatever your inheritance may be your good luck factor the luck factor also comes with that or bad luck factor whichever way you choose to look at it but let's get back to the higher self so the eighth house eight from the eighth house is house number three house number three which stands for your ability short travels individuality expenses of self it also stands for the initiation of sexual desire by the way there are many things of the third house you can look up my video which house represents what the houses of Vedic astrology Second house, second from the second house also feeds onto the third house. So the third house becomes critical as a receiver of all energies of what happens in your second house, depending upon how well placed your second house is and how well placed your eighth house is. Okay, this is what happens here. So what happens in your second house in your chart and whatever is happening or how well placed your eighth house is all will both will feed back to your third house. In terms of higher self, I can summarize this as whatever happens in your family, whatever is the stable elements of your life or how stable do you feel your life is or eighth house, how unstable your life is as opposed to stability will determine your individuality what you think as individual who am i and how you spend and develop your skills your abilities everything will depend upon what happens in your second house how much earned wealth you have because that will determine how much expenses you want to spend for yourself if you have wealth you can spend it you cannot spend possibly wealth you don't have and what happens in eighth house if your life is too unstable 
constantly fluctuating fluctuating situations at home or at career or in your relationships or in life generally too many ups and downs what's going to happen is that's going to change your sense of individuality and how you act in the world third house also stands for arms how you function arms are the way we function in the world your hands what you bring as your actions you require your two hands third house also stands for hands so what you will create with your hands look at the symbols here will depend upon what is happening in your second house and what is happening in your eighth house because both those results of these second and eighth houses the opposites are being fed into the third house okay think of it that way moving on to the third and the ninth house these opposites the third from the third house is the fifth house right you see third here for fifth two and three third place ninth house ninth place from the ninth house is also the fifth house so whatever goes on in your third house your abilities your skills your basic education your individuality the expenses you make for yourself okay and the opposite aspect of that what you develop as your philosophy of life what you think of your personal philosophy of life when i say philosophy of life it's personal for everyone right so this means whatever your personal philosophy you that you develop through life through your foreign travels if you ever go abroad to different places your view of the world which develops as a result of the about to life philosophy and your foreign travels and your expenses for others expenses for self in the third opposite is expenses for others all of these aspects that go on in your ninth house and your third house both feed back to fifth house now what is fifth house your creativity the creative intelligence is fifth house your real sense of self is also stands for the gut the belly your loves your romantic loves your desires that's the gain of your personal wealth when i say wealth wealth not your bank account not how much bank balance you have or not how many physical money or finance related riches you have it's the true wealth of your creative power your creative intelligence in the wealth your sense of self who do you think you are that sense of self because that's what you will bring to the world in the form of your loves your desires which keep changing through life right so it is fed from the third house what you gain as your skills third house what you do with your hands third house will eventually determine what kind of education you will do <clears throat> suppose earlier in your life you are a very handsy kind of person so you will want to carry out education and do something as handsy related stuff suppose you are an artist in the third house that artist may become very creative artist later on in life and their philosophy of life and foreign travel may also determine what they do further in life with that creativity see how the higher self develops through third and ninth house you can take it to all aspects of third house all aspects of the ninth house and see how it is feeding your fifth house in your chart okay that's the third and ninth opposite we come to the seventh house what feeds your idea of what the spouse is what is your relationship with your love interest what is your relationship with your lover or what you look for in relationships how it shifts through life is what this one is all about what are the determining factors well first of all what was your sense of your father and what was your sense of your mother because fourth from the fourth house is the seventh house and tenth from the tenth house is also your seventh house so that's how this is feeding in the information is being fed and remember all these three are kendra houses so it's very very crucial it is the determining factor how a person treats the spouse treats the lover treats the interest boyfriend or girlfriend is dependent upon how they were brought up 
and what is their sense individually speaking because each one even if they are siblings they have different sense of what their father was and what their mother was because mother will determine the fourth house will determine the heart your heart center and what you think of in your mind or how good or bad the father was so the houses may be exalted or person may be having a very good fourth house in their chart or a person may be having a very good tenth house or bad ones in either case or one may be good or one may be bad depending upon what the chart says the tenth house you might think your career i'm thinking in terms of father and mother here because it talks about the sense of other the sense of self even goes to business relationships by the way because seventh house also stands for relationships in business whom you do business with are they trustworthy or not you can look at their charts and determine this before you enter any business relationship for example okay so here what your father was because it's your chart we are not talking about your spouse's chart here their spouses their chart will be according to what their parents were we are talking about an individual chart here <clears throat> so understand that your sense of father and what your father meant to you in your life in terms of what you thought the father was in intimate terms what is intimacy mean to your father or meant to your father what does intimacy mean to your mother and how you saw that as the self because remember we spoke of the house number 1 this feeding into this one this is how the kendras affect one another okay this is how one area of life affects the core of you we are talking about the core of you here so it's important to understand that this sense of the spouse will feed into the first also which we looked at the first one but also your sense of father and the intimate aspects because seventh house is intimate aspect the marriage that happens what you are essentially marrying here is the sense of what your father's sense of intimacy was or how cold or aloof he was or how gentle and feminine he was feeding into that energy of what your sense of relationship is what are you looking for in your relationship as well as what goes on in your mother's house which is the fourth house how good your mother was was she gentle and caring or if the mother was intimate and the father was cold and aloof father was intimate and the mother was cold and aloof that's the sense of intimacy you will bring to your relationships this is what it means that's why that's why it's very very crucial for you to understand how these houses are functioning in your natal chart because that is the sense of intimacy you will bring to the other one you can change this provided you know this this is the conscious awareness folks higher self is all about conscious awareness it's not an unconscious drifting through life this is why i'm bringing this knowledge to you so you can analyze your charts or you can get in touch with me on facebook and we can analyze how this is playing up maybe for you maybe for your spouse relationships are very crucial because they are the foundations of your life now let's look at the ninth house what is going on in your ninth house it is fed from two houses in your chart in your natal chart we are talking only of natal charts here for the moment so the 11th place from the 11th house is the 9th house <clears throat> that's the arrow that is being indicated over here and the 5th place from the 5th house is also the 9th house so what is the 5th house stands for your personal sense of wealth personal sense of wealth means who you think you are what you have you gained in life as a self your sense of creativity your sense of creative intelligence and purpose which comes from the gut this also stands for the stomach you have to feel it in your belly the sense of self the sense of what you love what your desires are how they shift through life all this is the fifth house your gut the 11th house also stands for the thighs okay the ankle really speaking 
the ninth house is the thighs so 11th house stands for giving creativity here you are exploring your own sense of personal creativity here opposite house of fifth you are giving away creativity to the community your sense of community fifth house is the sense of self 11th house is the sense of community where you belong in a community your fulfillment of love and desires whether you do get fulfilled in life with all your needs of love romance desires etc whether this is house is strong or weak in your chart your gain as wealth from others when i say gain of wealth from others it may be in terms of adoration in terms of appreciation recognition and also in terms of physical wealth as money finance the reason is because we look at the fifth house it's all about self wealth what you feel inside as you that only you can gain from the previous uh, one we saw which third house is feeding into the fifth house right we saw that one the third and ninth feeding into the fifth house now we are looking at what feeds into the ninth house <clears throat> so as you can see they are all interconnected if i put them all in one chart you'll get really confused because it all leads finally back to the self that's how we get to the higher self but anyway so we see that one is a personal sense of wealth as what you see inside yourself and eventually as you move through all of these areas of life and as you age and mature you will reach this sense of giving your creativity to the world because your creativity doesn't mean anything unless you're giving something away to the world that's what it says folks you have to have a sense of community that's where your fulfillment of desires come from it comes from the external 11th house is all external 5th house is very internal and in your gut center and that's how you gain the wealth from others that's how you gain the money the appreciation the recognition the fame all of it you gain from the 11th house so 5th house and 11th house both feed into what what is the 9th house that's what determines your philosophy of life that's what you gain from your foreign travels the gain of all of this comes back and feeds into this ninth house of yours so depending upon how well the ninth house is doing 11th house is doing and fifth house you can see your sense of world view that's how some people are very narrow minded some people never develop a good broad view or a liberalistic view of the world some people are never accepting of other other race cultures religion because your world view is determined by what you think about yourself and what you are giving away to the community whether there is a sense of connect between the 5th and 11th house in your chart will determine how what kind of life philosophy you follow how broad or narrow minded it is and how much you will spend for others some people always keep spending for themselves they never spend anything for others that's a true life philosophy that's how you are living your life okay so that's this particular one now we come to the last one which is the essence of your work as i see it is the 6th house and the 12th house 6th house what does it stand for work for self whatever work you're doing as your job as your career your daily routine it stands for the waking hours it stands for known enemies the enemies that you have in the world which you know they are your enemies they stand for small illnesses cold cough that kind of a thing it stands for energy expense for self you are expending energy in the 6th house for yourself and 6th from the 6th house is the 11th house which is giving away your creativity to a sense of community that you have and it fulfills your desires or you gain wealth from others you earn money from others external world because you go and work somewhere and they are paying you for something whether it be job or business it doesn't matter that's how it plays out because 6th house feeds into the 11th house so what work you do for yourself as a your job career business in the waking hours with the known enemies that you know are your enemies with all your aches and pains you are expending that energy daily which is feeding into the 11th house right there up there in the yellow box 
<clears throat> so that gives you a sense of where you are creating in the sense of community because you are creating within a community you are going to work in an office or you are going to work in a shop or you have your own restaurant or whatever it is that's what it's feeding to that determines your gains another thing that determines your gains is the 12th house now the 12th house is opposite to the 6th house as you can see and it stands for service to others they call it also the spiritual house or the moksha house which we will talk about in a later video so it talks about sleeping hours 12th house stands for sleeping hours as opposed to 6th house which is for waking hours so what you do in the night your sexual life your how much amount you sleep and what you dream your psychic powers and intuition everything comes from the 12th house because it stands for the night time 6th house think of it as standing for the day time so we have day and night and how it plays out in your chart the 12th and 6th houses determines whether you are spending more time in intuition introverted 12th house is very introverted also it stands for hidden enemies as opposed to 6th house which is known enemies we all have hidden enemies the enemies who hide sometimes they are in plain sight sometimes they are within our family sometimes they are within our friends or colleagues at work or business or even relationships these are the hidden enemies who scheme against us who tend to take do things behind our back tend to gossip tend to take us down it also stands for chronic illnesses and i won't name them here but you know what the chronic illnesses are one which requires you to get into a hospital it also stands for hospitalization by the way it's energy expense only for others sixth house you are doing all the work for yourself energy expense for yourself and family 12th house is where you are giving away all of that to others and when i said 12th house is giving away all of that it is like the gain of the 11th house so in 11th house you are gaining all the money all the loves your desires your fame and recognition to do what with it finally the end game is to give it away whatever you have gained even if you are the richest multimillionaire or billionaire on this planet you're finally giving away your wealth that's the 12th house so the gain of the 11th house is really the 12th house meaning whatever you are giving away as wealth to others as service to others and whatever you are working for self if this is in balance if the house number 6 and house number 12 in your chart is balanced as per the planet placement and all the rest of it only then then and only then will you have the real sense of community only then you'll have a real fulfillment of what your true love is and what your true desire is and what is the hunt for that for that prized catch what you call as my life how fulfilled do you feel in all areas of love's desires money in the sense of fame and recognition in the world which is the 11th house because remember 11th house is the gain of the 10th house which is also stands for career job business what you are doing the gain of the 10th house is in the 11th house but that comes the final fruits of the 11th house comes from what you work for self in the 6th house and what you give away to others in the 12th house as a community then only then you will know what the real meaning or the higher self of the 6th and 12th house is that's what's gain that's what's the sense of community which is real which you are working towards in the 6th house and which you're giving away to others in your 12th house okay so in the next series we will be dealing with how these houses are playing in terms of dharma artha kama and moksha the four pillar foundations as told by vedic astrology So keep a watch on my channel and subscribe so you can follow these parts. Take care. Be safe and have a great day.